continue our thought, we take a look at a book called The Upward Spiral, using neuroscience to reverse the course of depression one small change at a time. And Dr. Alex Korb is a neuroscientist who studied the brain for over 15 years. He got an undergraduate degree in neuroscience from Brown University. He received his PhD in neuroscience from the University of California in Los Angeles, where he wrote his dissertation and numerous scientific articles on depression. And he is currently a professor at UCLA and the Department of Psychiatry. And his book, which has hundreds of excellent reviews, as you can see here on Amazon. And so I thought I'd share with you an interview that was done with Dr. Alex Korb so that he can share with us what can we do to rewire our brain and create an upward spiral towards a happier, healthier life. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, there's, uh, there's so much that you can do. I realize this is one of my... Uh, challenges when I was writing the upward spiral is that it would have been easier if I was just talking about like one thing because uh, most books are about like one thing they're like oh mindfulness is this just going to solve everything or like exercise is going to fix your whole life or like they just pick or you know you need more grit or resilience or whatever it is and like uh, there are a lot of uh uh, important things, and I, I think one of the things I've realized from studying the neuroscience is that there isn't just one solution to reversing the course of depression, or there's similarly there's not one uh, road to happiness. There's not one secret. There's dozens of different things that you can do, uh, from physical activity. Uh, just making changes in your movements or actions, making uh, even small changes in your in your thought patterns or uh, in your sleep habits or your exposure to sunlight or your uh, social interactions or even just like the environment that you're in. Uh, just making small changes in, in any of those things, and we can talk uh, – at length about any any particular one that you're most interested in, but just making small life changes uh, along those lines cause small positive brain changes in its uh, activity, uh, its chemistry, even its ability to form new neurons. Uh, and those small brain changes make further positive life changes more accessible, more possible. And so that's why I call it the upward spiral, because uh, you don't you don't need to change your whole life all at once. You just like make one tiny change that's like better than the default, better than the the rut that you're stuck in, and that will start to change your brain, and then that will make it easier to further uh, along the progress. Now, when people are hearing about depression, most often they're looking for a type of pharmacological solution, and quite frequently they get prescribed SSRIs. What role does mm -hmm. serotonin have to do with this, and, and is that the answer? Or? Uh, so it's funny. like When people often ask me about medication, it's either from one of two perspectives. They're either like really against medication, and they'll say, oh, I read your book and I'm so glad you're talking about all these non-medical alternatives. You know, medication is the worst. It's terrible. Psychiatrists are crooked, whatever. Uh, and other people will say, oh, you know, I'm glad you included that chapter on uh, medication and neuromodulation uh, because people are often denigrating it. And, you know, and, you know, I work in the Department of Psychiatry. I'm surrounded by a psychiatrist. Uh, so I think it's, it seems like most people are, are on one side or the other. They're either all in on medication or they're all in uh, on just sort of uh, behavioral or cognitive behavioral changes. And I like to take a more nuanced approach that medication can be extremely helpful. Uh, there are many studies that have shown that, uh, you know, if you... If you, if you take a hundred people with depression and you give them all, um, you know, an SSRI, well, after a couple months, forty of them will be completely better. They won't be depressed 
anymore at right. all. You know, another 30 will be mostly better. They'll still have some lingering uh, effects, but there'll be, you know, significant improvements. And the other 30, they just won't really experience much benefit at all. So if you happen to be one of those, you know, 40% of people, then yeah, medication is the answer. Like you're super depressed and you, it could all be solved just by taking one pill a day. Uh, and in that sense, like, wow, like something as complex as human depression could just be solved by taking, you know, one pill that targets one neurotransmitter system. And that's kind of amazing. But well, what if you're, you know, one of the other uh, 60% of people who are going to just going to get a little bit or uh, not much benefit at all? What can you do? Or, or even if you are going to eventually respond, you know, uh, really well to medication, like what can you do while you're waiting to see the psychiatrist or what can you do to help things along? Uh, and that's, that's a lot of what the upward spiral is all about. And it would originally why I got into all of this is because I was writing my dissertation. I was doing research on trying to figure out like who, who are those 40% of people? Like, could we figure out or do some sort of brain scan or EEG and say, ah, you have the kind of depression or the kind of brain, like you should definitely take medication. It's, that's going to solve all of your problems. But you like, ah, oh, you need to do something else. Uh, and we started to see some brain regions that kind of predicted that, but they weren't, uh, they weren't like quite as black or white in, in guiding right. treatment decisions as we would like. Uh, but I like to see, think of, um, medication as like, yeah, just one part of the upward spiral. And for some people, it's the most important part. And for some people, it might not even be a, a part of it at all. Just like for some people, exercise, physical exercise, physical activity is really important for them. And that's going to have a huge effect on say their serotonin system. Uh, you know, whether your serotonin system is best affected by medication or exercise, like it doesn't make you a better person just because you can, you know, exercise is a really efficient way to affect your serotonin system. But I think sometimes that's the way we think about it. Like, Oh, if you need medication then there's something wrong with you. Uh, but really like there are dozens of ways to interact with the serotonin system or the, dopamine system or all these other neurotransmitter system and medication is one powerful way, but so is meditation. Uh, so is exercise. Uh, we just don't know ahead of time which specific combination of all of those things is going to work best for you. So you should just know the menu of options right? and you can try them out. So in this menu of options, not everybody has the option of getting a prescription. Let's say someone is just looking to do this on their own. Let's talk about this. Like, what role does serotonin play? And you also mentioned this dopamine system as well. What are these yeah. things? How are they related to so, increasing yeah. well being and mental health? Yeah, I mean, so the brain is really complex, and sometimes they talk about brain regions, or sometimes they talk about um, chemicals. And serotonin and dopamine, those are both two key chemicals in the brain. They're types of neurotransmitters, which are the chemicals that neurons use to communicate with each other. Uh, and serotonin plays, uh, well, it's actually easier to talk about dopamine first because dopamine okay. is sort of simpler. Uh, dopamine is really important in learning new things. It's, it's also really important in um, uh, habits and reward. Uh, like when you do something that's pleasurable, your brain releases a little bit of dopamine to essentially say, oh, yeah, yeah, do that again. Um, the, uh, uh, so dopamine provides a little spark of joy and it provides a little motivation uh, to, to do things. Um, Serotonin actually can modulate the dopamine system, uh, but it's more about regulating 
your mood and uh, about willpower. So um, if I have some clear, concrete uh, reward in front of me uh, and then I can see what I'm you know, trying to work for or trying to get to, dopamine is going to like be released to sort of push me along that path and motivate me to get that reward. And then when I get that reward, it's going to um, uh, give me a little extra boost. Uh, serotonin is what helps you uh, change your action based on like future abstract rewards that don't actually exist. Like, why is it that uh, you would sit and, you know, work all day when you could just be watching TV. Like, at any given moment, like, just sitting watching TV or hanging out with your friends, like, that's more pleasurable. And the reward circuits in the brain would be releasing dopamine to be like, hey, just, just go do the thing that's most immediately pleasurable. Mm. Serotonin comes in and sort of allows you to override that and be like, no, no, uh, I'm not going to do the thing that's most immediately pleasurable right now. I'm going to I'm going to sit here and do the thing that's not particularly pleasurable because that's what's going to move me towards my long-term goal. And in depression, you often have problems with both of those things. Uh, so when you, when the dopamine system is out of whack, you're just not as you know motivated to do things, right. uh, and they're not as rewarding or enjoyable, uh, perhaps as they used to be so you're like you know usually you used to go hang out with your friends or do things because they were fun but if there's a problem with dopamine they're just not as fun anymore so what's the point of doing them uh and there's also a problem with the serotonin system whereby you're like okay I, I know what i'm supposed to do you know but you just can't connect your present action to these like sort of future abstract rewards because there's a problem with the serotonin system. And so what do you do if you're not being driven by sort of immediate pleasure or you're not being driven by long-term goals? You just kind of don't do anything. Before we get to the end of this video, I thought I'd share with everyone a quote from your book. Trying to think of things to be grateful for forces you to focus on the positive aspects of your life. And this simple act increases serotonin production in the anterior cingulate cortex. Remembering sad events decreases serotonin production in the anterior cingulate. Join us in the next video where we hear more from Dr. Alex Korb and his wonderful book, The Upward Spiral, Using Neuroscience to Reverse the Course of Depression One Small Change at a Time. This is D.S. Ivan at ReprogrammingMind.com. Bye for now.